I'm about to put this argument to rest once and for all. Dirty Potters, how are you today? So this in my left hand is red iron oxide, and this in my right hand is red iron oxide Spanish version. Today we're testing out red iron oxide versus Spanish red iron oxide, and the reason I want to test this out is because each and every time I make a glaze where red is the base, or at least a lot of red iron oxide is the base of the colorant, people are always like, oh man, you gotta, you gotta try red iron oxide. It's the jam! And not only have I never tested this, this is a little bit hard to find for me in some places. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of my favorite glazes, Randy's Red, which has a heavy amount of red iron oxide in it. And I'm going to make a second glaze with Spanish red iron oxide in it just to see what the differences are. Now before we get this video started, keep in mind my Randy's Red is a tiny bit different in that it calls for F4 Kona Feldspar, but I don't have any more of that stuff. So you're supposed to use Minspar. I don't use either one of those. I actually use Custer Feldspar because in my experience it comes out a lot better. Kind of like Ancient Jasper from Amico. So that's what we're using today as a substitute if you do know the recipe. If you don't, too bad you're not getting it today. Yeah, you thought you were going to get a free recipe out of this, didn't you? Psych. Yeah, that's right. Cry. Your tears make me feel good. In the left jar here, we're going to be putting regular Randy's Red with Custer Feldspar in it. And in the right jar here, we're going to be putting the same exact thing, but with Spanish Iron Oxide instead. And of course, we're going to have test styles, as well as some actual real product test styles, like bowls, at the end of this video. Because in my experience, test styles are good, but they only test a tiny, tiny bit. But if I want to know how it really spreads out along a product, such as a bowl or, or a plate or something like that, I really want that bowl to test on. So I've made a couple bowls just for that instance. So at the end of this video, we're going to have a white porcelain test style and a brown test style of my regular Randy's Red Recipe. And we're going to have another brown test style and another porcelain test style of the Randy's Red Recipe with Spanish Red Iron Oxide in it. We're also going to be testing it on a porcelain bowl today because I really like to see the glaze mat over a surface and I like to see how it pulls on the inside of bowls. So there's really nothing like seeing it on a final product. So not only are we going to do it on those four test styles, but we're going to do it on one of these bowls right here. And in case you're wondering, we're going to be testing this out at Cone 5-6 Oxidation. We're making a four batch, that means there's going to be 400 grams of each one minus the colorants inside of these jars right here. And we'll be sieving it with a 40 mesh because we're making tiny batches today, so I have a tiny little 40 batch here. Okay, so this one on our left hand side is going to get the regular old red iron oxide and this is what it looks like. It's just regular red old iron oxide. Okay, this is Randy's Red Regular. I'm going to put this one over here because I'm pretty sure they're going to look exactly the same and I'm going to mix them up sooner or later. Now red iron oxide ain't exactly clean so I'm going to go rinse off my equipment real quick. Just to make sure there's no cross contamination. Yay, clean equipment, yay. I'm actually really excited to see if there's any difference in Spanish Iron Oxide versus Red Iron Oxide because I've never seen it before, but I have been told it's a lot more concentrated than regular old Red Iron Oxide, so I wonder if it looks any different. I don't know if you guys can see it off camera, but it does look a little bit lighter to me. So I do notice that this is a little bit lighter and a little bit more coarse than the Red Iron Oxide that I usually buy. I will say that, but that's about the only difference I'm noticing right now. So over here on my left, we have regular old red iron oxide with Randy's Red. And over here on my right, we have Spanish red iron oxide, which is Randy's Red. It's really important to keep these two in mind, because from this point on, I'm keeping all the stuff with Randy's Red on this side, and all the stuff with Randy's Red and Spanish iron oxide on this side. So the test styles will end up over here, and the Spanish iron oxide test styles will end up over here. And the bowl will probably end up somewhere in the middle. I'm also going to be using different brushes for this sieve simply because I really don't want any cross contamination in between the brushes. So this one's going to be for the Spanish Iron Oxide and this one's going to be for the Red Iron Oxide, regular. 
Okay, this one's done. This one is Randy's Red with Spanish Red Oxen in it. And I sieved it three different times, and it's a little bit watery just so I can spray it. So put this one over here. All right, cool, they're both done. This one is the regular one, and that one over there is the Red Iron Oxide Spanish version. So now we're gonna dip our test dials in here. One of the reasons I really like these test dials is because there's lines in them. There's one, two, and three different lines. So this is the first layer, here's two layers, and here's three layers. So this test dial is always going to be three different layers. That way I can see the variation of three layers of this glaze, two layers of it, and then one layer of it way down here. Okay, so over here is the Spanish Red Iron Oxide Randy's Red variation that is going to be in Cone 5-6 oxidation in an electric kiln. And over here is the same exact thing, but there's no Spanish in it. So this is Randy's Red with Red Iron Oxide regular that you would buy in America. It's going to be inside of Cone 5-6 oxidation in an electric kiln. I know I keep saying this, I know it's probably super annoying, but I have to remind myself or else I will mix these two up. So we're going to put these in the kiln and we're going to come back in about a week and see how it goes. Next morning. Okay, I just woke up and I'm pretty sure this is ready. It's been cooling off for about a day and a half. So let's see what's in here. Okay, so these are all of them. Everything on the left hand side is red iron oxide regular style, and everything on the right hand side is Spanish red iron oxide. They're the same exact base, and they're both at cone 6 oxidation inside of an electric kiln. So let's take a look at the left side first. Now these are pretty much the test dials for Randy's Red. This is kind of what I expect, and this usually reminds me of Ancient Jasper from Amico. It's that kind of reddish dark jasper looking glaze. This is as close to red as I'm going to get in an oxidation kiln without using actual colorants and stains. So this, I, I expected this to come out exactly how it did. This is why it's one of my favorite glazes. It's really nice potter's red. It's not exactly bright red and it's not exactly dark red. It's somewhere in the middle of that kind of creamy potter's red. This is more what I'm used to seeing on the inside of a bowl. You see that dark rich kind of red and here's the thing I wouldn't exactly call this red but what else would I call this? So this is why it's kind of called Randy's Red. As a little bonus, I actually made the glaze with mince bar on the outside, and this turned out really, really well. I like this as well. This has a little bit more variation of yellow in it, but again, this is not red. This is the mince bar version of the recipe. This is the custard feldspar version of the recipe. It's one of the reasons why I use custard feldspar. I'm very much into this color, but at the same time, this is, is Randy's Red. This is not Randy's Red. This is Randy's Red with a substitute. This is Randy's Red. And I made one more bowl. This again is Randy's Red. The only difference is I put my clear on the outside. So this is Randy's Red mixed in with my clear right here. This is my clear. And then this is straight Randy's Red. So remember everything on the left hand side has red on oxide. I don't really notice a variation as of right now. And I think that's only because I'm looking at single product. Okay, we're done with the left side. Let's analyze the right side now. This right here is the red iron oxide Spanish version. I will say that I do notice it's a little bit lighter as far as the red iron oxide goes, but I will also say that it looks a little bit more granular. It looks kind of like either I didn't sieve it properly or something, but I will say I sieved them both equally three times. I did the same exact techniques. I dipped them the same amount of seconds, and so I think this is really just a different variation of red iron oxide as far as this granular structure goes right here. When I was pouring it, I did notice that they're a little bit more granular. And this, again, is Randy's Red on the outside with that mince bar substitute. 
Again, I like it, although it is not red. It's red inside this crevice right here where it stayed, so maybe I have to double dip it or something. But I will say this is not red to me. This is more red than this is. And here we have it on the other adjacent porcelain bowl. This came out a lot smoother than I thought it would. I'm not sure why, but I will say that they seem to kind of be the same. The one thing that I do notice is that this Randy's Red over here, the Spanish Iron Oxide version, seems to be a tiny, tiny, tiny bit brighter, and I'm not sure why. Again, inside this bowl, it's porcelain at cone 6 oxidation inside of an electric kiln, is Randy's Red with a Spanish Iron Oxide. This is it mixed in with my clear, and I like it a little more. I think it's because it's a little more granular, and this is my clear right here, so you can see the variation of what's going on, from Randy's Red all the way melting down to that clear, all the way to the clear. And just for fun, I made a teapot, but I put the old recipe of Randy's Red, which kind of miffs me off, because this is a really good red from that Mince Par 200 Randy's Red, and for some reason, it turned red, and so, like, what, make up your mind, Randy. But then in the middle where I sprayed the clear, it kind of went back to its original Randy's Red with that, that not red color, but it went completely red here, so I'm, I'm very confused right now at what's going on. And I tried to put those two bowls over there inside of the hot spot in my kiln while this was at the top of my kiln. So I, d I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. But I made a teapot. Yay! Alright, well I gotta get going now. Thank you guys very much for dropping in. I appreciate your Dirty Potter faces. I will say this this test has kind of been conclusive for me in that I don't really notice a real difference. I do notice that the Red Iron Oxide over here is a tiny bit lighter in the Spanish version. As for this version over here is a tiny bit darker and this seems to be a little less coarse than this is and that's essentially the only thing that I'm noticing. So all those people who told me it was the cat's pajamas can now sleep in it. But thank you guys, Astro Boy, get the F out of here. But thank you guys very much for watching this video. I really hope this helps some of you guys decide in between that red iron oxide and that Spanish iron oxide. Or if you have a friend who's like, oh, bro, bro, it's the jam. Bro, you can show them this video and be like, we did it at cone six electric oxidation. And it's, it's, it's exactly, it's essentially exactly the same. So you tell them, you tell them, tell them to shove it. Tell them to shut up. If you want to see any of my actual artwork, the links are down below, my Instagram, my Facebook fan page, just in case you ever want to see some extra goodies. And I will see your Dirty Potters next week. So you tell him, you tell him, you, sh you shut up, you shut your face hole. <clears throat> I mean, um, thank you for watching the video.